everyone and welcome to Raw Sound Entertainment's 500 Greatest Album Review by Rolling Stone Magazine. So today we will be looking at number 491 on the list, Albert King, Born Under a Bad Sign. So we have two hosts here as usual. My name is Sam. And I'm Marshall. And today we will be taking a look at this album together. So, Marshall. Oh, before I start, <laughs> I always forget to say this. It is more fun if you listen along with us because that way you will get to experience the album and be able to understand our critiques. But it is also obviously okay for you to not listen to the album, but it might make more sense. Also, um, last thing, Twitter is on the screen right now. Um, if you want to follow us there, it's a great place to interact with us. Also, in the comment section is the best place to interact with us because we can just reply to your comments right there. So, Marshall. Why don't you start us off by telling us a little bit about Albert King. Albert King Nelson uh, was born in 1923 in Mississippi. Uh, so we, we have a lot of, like, we, we've been doing a lot of um, artists who were born in the South, actually. Yeah. I, what is this, the, the fourth? I don't know. We had Third? Outcast. we had B.B. King, we had... Uh, I guess this would be the third. What? I thought there was another. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess Boz from the, the South? Oh, uh, he might have been. I mean, we have to mention him in every episode, right? So. Boz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Tell us about Albert. But, uh, yeah. Uh, born in Mississippi, and he is an American blues guitarist and singer. Um, he is a major influence in the world of blues. Um, if you're a blues kind of person, if you listen to a lot of blues, you don't need to be told this. You already know about him. Um, and he's known as one of the three kings of blues guitars, along with B.B. King, who we've already talked about, and Freddie King, who we probably will talk about, but I'm not sure. Um, and he is actually best known for this album, Born Under a Bad Sign, especially the title track, uh, Born Under a Bad Sign, of the album. Uh, now, one interesting fact about him is that he is a pretty big guy uh, compared to a lot of recording artists. He uh, was six foot four, same as Lincoln and your co-host Marshall, and weighed a hefty 250 pounds. Um, probably more than Lincoln, and unfortunately less than Marshall. So he Wait, was known... Marshall. You're six feet four. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's tall. Yeah, pretty tall. And he's known as the Velvet Bulldozer. So that's pretty. That's 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 an awesome nickname. He, that that is a really cool. That'd nickname. be a good nickname for a pimp, because <laughs> you could wear velvet. And I'm the bulldozer, baby. <laughs> um, Ooh, we do not support that kind of behavior on this. Sorry, show. <laughs> sorry. Um, and big thing in May of 2013, somewhat recently, uh, he was posthumously induced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So great for him. I mean, to be fair, anybody can make it into that thing, it seems. It oh, seems like everybody's shit. in that. I, I'm just going to put it out there. It seems like every single artist that's been somewhat influential, sort of, is in there. So, just going to put that out there. In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Marshall, you probably have a place in there, don't you? Maybe. Hey, I, I mean, could probably I could probably craft my way into there. It's it's nearby. It's in the Midwest. It's in Cleveland, <laughs> Ohio. So I there could, you go. I could sneak in, make myself a wax... Wait, do they use wax figures there, or do they just like have gold albums on the walls? I I've never actually been know. there. I've never been. I, that's I should I go. go there. I think I want to go there. I'm so close. I was just in Cleveland. <laughs> what are you doing with your life, Marshall? Come on, man. Come anyway, on. but uh, yeah, that. But that's about um, all uh, about uh, King. Oh, and um, I did. I did mean to mention this. He was also like our other King. This is kind of creepy, uh, or a coincidence. Like B.B. King, he was born on a cotton plantation. This is, like, oh. insane. So, obviously, this sort of upbringing just breeds singing or musical background. Um, it's really cool. I think I think that is a really cool aspect to it, for sure. And it adds a lot of soul to their music, I think, as well. Yeah. And I think he was... I think this... I think he was born a little bit before B.B. King. Yes. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's older. Um, but, yeah. Uh, now, let's get to uh, our review of the album cover for this the album. The best part. The best part, yeah. for sure. Um, my f Probably one of my favorite parts of this album. It's really cool. I like it. It is cool, yeah. It's, it's cartoony. A, it's, a, 
it's especially cool for the 60s because it's that sort of art deco almost uh 1920s and 30s you could almost see this like on a uh old uh poster for a movie you know a really old movie like i'm not talking like 70s movie i'm talking like 30s movie you know? I, I love old movie movie uh marquees they're so cool they're really cool and this sort of has that look that almost um james bond intro look as i would put it because it's it's almost like uh like an old james bond intro like i'm not talking new i'm talking like the 60s james bond like dr no and all those old ones where or the original casino royale since there's a card and dice <laughs> yeah maybe maybe so yeah it maybe reminds me of even the modern casino royale because i think they kind of do a tie into the old one in the intro at least so yeah it was it, it's really cool subject matter i think as well with sort of their born under a bad sign sort of tying into the bad luck side of things how friday the 13th you have the black cat and then you have the ace of spades which is the strongest card in a lot of card games and then you have the well uh, is the ace guys. of spades unlucky because this uh, is these are all things that are unlucky that are bad black cats snake eyes friday the 13th is ace of spades unlucky i didn't know that or is I, it, I don't I don't know maybe it must represent ill fortune which I didn't mm. know because uh, I don't know. or maybe maybe it's just maybe it's just an infamous card and so these are like infamous I don't know but uh, yeah and why does the cat have a big skull and crossbones over it you see I think that's just a stylistic choice I honestly don't think it has any meaning per se mm-hmm. I, I I don't know why maybe it's just because it's deadly I don't know All, I couldn't tell you also. Us at Raw Sound Entertainment can really appreciate a good font. And this is a decent font. I like it. I like it it is a decent font. F- fits it's, the theme. It's very reminiscent of a lot of fonts that I see used nowadays, especially in signs that are made by smaller businesses. Like, smaller businesses are like this this font right here. It's like I guess it's a good font to go to. It's almost a Times New Roman. I, almost. I, I think, and this isn't quite one of those fonts, but I think the best fonts are from this era, the 60s. Some yes. of the fonts they used in advertising back then, like if you see like Mad Men, like that's the golden age of advertising. And some of the fonts they used were so colorful, artistic, sort of like, you know, round and, and just beautiful. And now I feel like the fonts we use are so thin and angular and harsh. It's like, ah, um, and they're and they're considered the fonts we use now are considered cool. But I feel like they'll be looked upon strangely in 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, this is pretty basic, though. If you look at it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. They're just making a font with some nice... Um, I don't know what they me, call that. To me, this font somehow feels cartoony. It might just be the background, but I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. I see it as more of a... Like, Times New Roman being the typical font for most uh, papers and most thing, assignments that need to be handed in at uh, colleges and high school. Um, this seems to match it quite a bit. It seems to be almost like that. So, it, to me, it looks very basic, honestly. But anyway, point is, we like it. <laughs> I, I like the album cover. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should give a rating to the album covers from now. No. <laughs> no, no. That's too, much. Oh, too much. Too much. Dude, too much. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> too many numbers. Let's get to the actual content, shall we? I, I would love to. All right. So um, let's talk about what we liked, what we didn't like. Let's t- start with you, Marshall, since I spoke a lot, I think, for the album cover. Uh, yeah, that's uh, – so I – for the most part, just to, just to give a precursor, I really like this album compared to the other blues albums we've heard. Compared to the last album, um, going off of the last album, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Oh, sorry. I know this is mid-flow. I need to make an addendum to last yes, the, the last video, our last review. In our last review, I said that I had never heard any songs from the album Touch on the radio. Oh. Huh? I ate my words the next day. No, you heard a song from it? Yeah, I heard the the main song. Uh, what's it called? Rain? Um, oh, I forget. Um, this is bad. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Let me let me look it up. I'll, I'll look it up quickly. Uh, touch, touch, touch. It's not the first result. Damn it! <laughs> Here comes the rain again. Okay, there it is. Here comes the rain again. I heard it on the radio. I, on an oldie station. It wasn't like, obviously, it wasn't on the, like the the top number 40s. six on the top 40 this week <laughs> that would be crazy <laughs> that um would be a no but i heard it on an oldie station which i you know i i ate my words apparently more popular more classic than i thought it to be so that's that's a quick addendum to last episode um and i thought that was cool like that made me feel sort of awesome inside because that's i feel pretty like cool watching these listening to these albums is making us as i have said earlier more 
uh, musically diverse, and it's and it's playing off to our to our everyday lives. I think you know once we've listened to a lot of these albums, we're gonna find I think more often that we hear songs and we're like, I know what that is, and people are like, you know what this is? Like, yeah, I can name the album. <laughs> and then after listening to this list, we could then go to Rolling Stones and say, listen. Can we be on the, the 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 next list? Can we be your consultants for the next list? You yeah. know, can we work we'll be for there. you? Because yeah. you guys suck at your jobs. Because <laughs> I mean, sure, we we all like Beatles as much as the next guy, but who sucked you guys off in the band? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> I think I think Ringo got a little bit crazy. No. <laughs> anyway, but to get back to what I thought about this album, um. I really liked Born Under a Bad Sign, the title track. It's good. Classic bluesy sound. Um, I really like Kansas City. Very unique. Um, oh, Pretty Woman. Also very bluesy. Uh, in fact, a lot of these songs were... I think the most bluesy song, if I think about it, was actually Personal Manager. Um, do you remember that song? Yes, I do. And it was weird, too. I Want to Be Your Personal Manager. Yeah. It was like... It's, it seems sort of irrelevant to me. <laughs> like, I was like, I want to be your personal manager. Worst pickup line I would <laughs> I would prefer if it were personal assistant. I think that would make more sense if that was the line. Yes. I feel like personal manager feels forceful. <laughs> but personal assistant's like, I want to help you with everything, dear. <laughs> you know? I, I like that, yeah. That's that makes true. more sense to me. Anyway, um, but uh, I think my favorites, though, were Born Under a Bad Sign, Kansas City, as the years go passing by and the very thought of you, I thought this album for me ended very strongly. Those last two songs were very soft, very, very tender. His voice, amazing. Um, very smooth. He's very, got a very smooth. Voice. Smooth. Uh, I compared him uh, off screen to another king, <laughs> another famous king, Nat King Cole. He's got a very Nat King Cole like voice, especially on that very last song. Uh, so overall, I really like this album. Uh, and I and I and I loved well, not loved. I really liked four of the songs on it. The rest were kind of eh, but four of the songs really spoke out to me, which was not true of the last album. So I can say confidently that "Born Under a Bad Sign" for me was better than "Touch." <clears throat> anyway, what what did you think about the album? I thought it was okay, honestly. Like it, I've heard so much. We've had so much blues on these first 10 albums because this is going to be our 10th album i don't even feel it anymore (laughs) right i i've I've listened to so much blues in these past albums and i've never really actively listened to blues and at this point i it all sounds the same to me i hate to say it you'd think that it would start sounding different but the blues for me has a very distinct sound now and this album just keeps uh, making my theory true in my eyes um kansas city does try to be a bit different they have some weird bridges in there which i think are kind of original and good and i kansas city was probably is my favorite track on this album for sure 100 percent um i listened to the album twice maybe even three times i think i listened halfway through the third time anyways kansas city all three times i thought was the most enjoyable track um other than that though you just got some really generic blues in here with the with some smoother vocals though You see, with the two other uh, blues artists we've seen, uh, Boz Skaggs and B.B. King, they had a much rougher voice. It was much um, raspier than Albert King, who had a very smooth, almost jazz-like voice. So you could see it was... I thought it was a bit more enjoyable than those other guys because it was was much easier listening to me. Well, and if if, if, uh, B.B. King is the perfect performer to play in a prison... Then Albert King is the perfect performer to play in a club, you know, like an, an old-fashioned nightclub. Yeah, that you know? like he—it's total duality with these two blues artists. Um, yeah, like you said, very soft, very like I want to use almost the word sensual, like, um, very, very, very awesome sounding voice. Anyway, um, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, do do is there anything else we'd like to say about the album before we rate it? Um, I thought it was just really generic, honestly. I mean, he had an interesting voice, but other than that, it was it was blues. That's all I got to say. I mean, I, I agree with you for the most part. I mean, I think my rating, not my rating, I think my enthusiastic response to the album was mainly as a result of Touch just did not speak to me at all. And I actually expected good things from Touch. While I didn't expect anything really that impressive from this, so I went to this. You know, I, I find that keeps happening. Like I, I'm on a, I'm on like a turning wheel of expectations. <laughs> it's it's really bad, Marshall. <laughs> you should go see a psychiatrist. I should. <laughs> like, oh, he needs drugs. I expect anyway. too much. <laughs> yeah, but um, 
this I liked it. Uh, I liked it for what it was. So, uh, what'd you give it? Uh, I'm gonna give it the same score I gave Touch, five out of ten. Me too. I'm giving it five out of ten. Uh, yeah, we matched again. One more above Touch for me, All and right. uh, the same score as Give It Up. <laughs> you see, like there was nothing I really hated on this album. I just thought it was kind of generic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's it for this album. We did a little bit shorter than usual. We're about at the 15 minute mark. So I guess we got a little bit of time to talk about our next album that we would have spoken about even if we had gone for 45 minutes. But I digress. Um, the next album on the list is ZZ Top's Tres Hombres. And I am personally not a big fan of ZZ Top. I cannot. Like, I'm not a big fan of that album cover. <laughs> no, no, I'm so happy to talk about that. <laughs> that album cover does not speak well of the album itself. Is that someone oh. pissing on a on a wall? Or <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. It's it's hard to tell. They're very low quality pictures, very small. Yeah. Um. But it's in good okay. news. I think the five albums after ZZ Top are all really good looking, and I can't wait for them. But we'll have to. We'll have to deal with ZZ Top. And who knows? It might surprise me. Like, I haven't listened to a lot of his songs. I just have Their a... songs. They're a duo. Sorry, their songs. I haven't listened to a lot of their songs, so I just sort of have a, I think, a bad taste in my mouth from the few or I the have. trio. There. Blues trio. Blues? Oh! What? They They're are blues. not blues. It says blues trio. That, there's no fucking way. Oh. I want to do more blues, Marshall. Can we just go? Can we just go listen to like something else? I didn't even know ZZ Top was blues. I don't think I of guess, it. Yes, I guess they are, man. I guess, I guess so. You're in so just depression. Well, I don't know, man. After that, it's not blues though. It's Kiss, which I, I don't mind Kiss. So we're going we to got, good. We've got Kiss, then a punk band, then a '80s pop, then then '70s disco. <laughs> Wait, Husker Du is a punk band? I think so. Yeah, with Nirvana, among others, and, their big influences. And then 90s grunge for for 85. So uh, all very exciting coming up after that. Yeah, so stick with us for some interesting I albums. I really after can't ZZ wait Top. for Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> really? Yeah, I like them. You don't I like don't know them. what to expect. Oh, you haven't heard them? I don't listen to them a lot, no. Well, well stick around for some interesting stuff. I mean, uh, after ZZ Top, which I'm not too excited for, but I'm, maybe you guys are. Um, we're just being, so, we're just totally ostracizing the ZZ Top audience. They're <laughs> all like, they're audience. all like, we feel worse than the Buzz Skag fan. I say fan <laughs> because there's probably only one of you in the entire world. Uh, probably only one that's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, so that's it. Um, that's that's our lineup for the next few weeks. Hope, or, well, few weeks. I'm saying it realistically from the upload schedule we've been having lately. Sorry about that. It's just been we, I've had a busy life lately, so. And it, and it's been partially my fault too. Um, I, I don't blame it on you, man. It was it was it was mostly me. Yeah, um, fuck him. It's his fault. Anyway, <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs> no. That that's it. So um, that's it for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do leave a like and subscribe. Um, leave your comments in the comment section below about what you thought about um, this review and what you thought about the album. Also, um, you can tweet at us on Twitter if you prefer to talk to us there, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.